Hello friends, welcome back. Newcomers, thank you for joining. I am Agrippa. Let's play some more Europa Universalis 4. So today I thought I would go ahead and start a new campaign. Um, I've been playing around with the latest expansion, Mari Nostrum, for some time now, uh, and I think I have a good grasp, or at least as good a grasp as I'm going to get, uh, of the new mechanics introduced. Um, there's a lot that I'll go into, but with a campaign named Mari Nostrum, how could I not play a game as as Italy um, and relive the glory of the Roman Empire. You know, my channel is subtly Roman themed, so I, I have to do that at some point in time. I've also been listening to a lot of the History of Rome podcast by Mike Duncan. If you haven't uh, heard of it and you're a big, big history fan and podcast fan, I strongly urge you to check it out. So I thought we'd play a game as Italy, specifically as Florence. Um, so I'm going to spend this first episode just introducing um, Florence as a country, uh, and then Italy with its ideas and sort of my long-term strategy for the game. So if you're on YouTube and want to see some action, skip ahead to the next video. If you're on Twitch, just skip ahead a few minutes and I should get rolling. So let's take a quick look at Florence first. I've never actually played as Florence in uh, EU4 before or any of the Universalis games. Um, but they, they're interesting. They start, you know, smack dab in the center of Italy. They are a part of the Holy Roman Empire, which is nice. And they start with a trade node in Firenze, Florence, uh, which you can't see on this map, but it's there. Trust me. Um, and like I said, I've, I've never played them before, but I think they're perhaps one of the easiest contenders to form Italy um, for a few different reasons. First of all, they start with a, a decent starting development, 57. So they sort of dwarf the one province miners around them, even some of the smaller countries. They're not as large as, say, uh, Milan, with 85 development, or Venice with 142, or even Savoy with something like 83. Um, they start with a respectable amount, um, and they're able to field a decent enough army compared to uh, their neighbors. The Tuscan ideas are also pretty nice. Um, so the starting traditions, minus 10% development costs, plus 2% yearly papal influence. Um, I can sort of take or leave those. I like the development cost. I don't actually end up doing a ton of development in my playthroughs. Um, I tend to be a little bit more aggressive in expansion rather than development, but this particular campaign I want to focus on making Italy as rich and prosperous as possible, so I fully expect that to be useful. Um, the yearly papal influence, it, it might as well be, you know, admin points, it might as well be monarch power. Um, because with some of the new mechanics uh, for the papacy, we can spend that to increase stability, and spend it to increase uh, yearly tax income, uh, yearly legitimacy, things like that. So that's it is useful, and I'll probably plan on staying Catholic for most of the game. It's just easier that way. Uh, our first national idea is 5% uh, reduced technology cost, 5% reduced idea cost really great all around. Um, that means you're saving essentially 30 points uh, just on a base uh, for each technology research, um, and about 20 points on each idea you select, um, which adds up over time. And you can use those points to stay ahead of time in tech, or to develop your own provinces, and that's what I expand, expect to do. I want to take advantage of that. Uh, minus 25% um, mercenary maintenance. Really pretty useless. Um, this is something I wish Paradox would address. This is actually an additive multiplier, um, not a multiplicative one. So what that means is that uh, mercenaries cost 1.5 times as much as normal troops. So if you're spending one ducat on a normal infantry regiment, you'll be spending 2.5 on a mercenary regiment. This only reduces that by 0.25. So uh, if the base is 2.5 for each mercenary infantry re regiment, this reduces it to 2.25 which is essentially useless in my opinion, and it's a bit misleading when you think that uh, this could reduce mer mercenary maintenance by a quarter. It doesn't. It reduces it by, what, like a sixth or something? Um, which just isn't, isn't useful, in my opinion. Nice to have, but not particularly strong. Tuscan Banking. Uh, reduced interest, uh, yearly interest by 1%. So this is um, okay. I, I tend not to like to go into debt, but we might have to do that in our campaign in order to expand appropriately, so that could be useful. Uh, plus one yearly prestige. Uh, I'm a fan of these ideas. I like prestige. Um, with 
the introduction of estates in Europa Universalis for prestige has become a little bit more of a valuable currency. Uh, you can spend prestige to boost um, either the influence or loyalty of your relative estates, uh, and I find that quite useful uh, beyond prestige's normal effects, which increase trade power and uh, morale of units and a whole bunch of things. Um, so I like that. That's pretty good. Plus 15% trade efficiency. Always nice, particularly uh, for trade-based countries like most of the Italian miners, really anyone that starts in the Mediterranean area, this is going to be really nice to boost my income uh, and to com out-compete my neighbors. Plus 10% production efficiency, uh, not so great. Uh, would rather have pretty much anything else. Um, plus 25% national manpower modifier, that's always nice. Um, having more troops uh, in a larger manpower pool I find to be invaluable. It's always nice. Uh, so I'm a big fan of that. And last but not least, uh, the Tuscan Ambitions, we get 5% uh, added Discipline once we complete all these ideas, which again is fantastic. Discipline, as I understand it, not only increases the damage your troops do, but also reduces the damage they take. So it's doubly good for uh, strengthening the quality of your troops. So all in all, I think these ideas are, are really pretty good, um, and I'm a big fan. Uh, I also... The sort of long-term goal of my campaign is to make Italy as prosperous and as well-developed as possible. And that means not outright taking many of these small Italian states. I want uh, countries like Siena and Lucca and Mantua and Urbino um, to develop on their own. Uh, each of these countries gets their own monarch power stream. I want them to spend those points on developing those provinces, because it is cheaper for me to conquer them and core them than it is for me to develop them outright. So I will wait uh, as long as I think it's wise to form Italy. Uh, and make it a particular point to keep as many of these small states around as possible, to have as many independent nations as possible in Italy developing their provinces without me having to spend my own monarch power. That's going to be really tough, I think. I've never played that way before. Um, it's It means that I won't have as much territory under my direct control. I'll have to guarantee countries' independence, Forced release some countries like Parma and Modena are, are both releasable by Milan and Ferreira, respectively. Um, and I'll also have to watch and make sure that they don't grow too strong, because if that happens, uh, you might just have to take them down. You might be forced to. Um, and we'll see the start of our playthrough. Florence, uh, or, you know, it's, it may not be the, the best country to start Italy, or to form as Italy. Um, but it's, it's pretty good, um, and part of the reason for that, we'll just plop this up, uh, this is the Italy page on the E4 wiki. Um, Florence starts very close to most of the provinces required to form Italy. So we have a core in uh, Firenze in Florence right here. We can easily take over Siena, expand into Ancona and Roma, and up into the northern Ital Italian states. Um, whereas, starting at some of the other countries, um, you don't really have that benefit. Particularly Naples, it's really hard. You're not in the Holy Roman Empire. You are in a personal union with Aragon. You might be large, but you're far away from the uh, provinces required to form Italy. Uh, sort of a similar thing with Venice. Um, I mean, Venice has its own unique ideas. If you play as Venice, you should really play a trade game. That's the most interesting way to play them, and uh, it almost makes sense to stay as Venice and not form Italy. Um, the same is true, I guess, with Genoa. I've had a lot of fun playing as Genoa before, and doing the same thing, doing a colonization game, sort of out-competing uh, some of the traditional colonizers in Portugal, Castile, England. Milan um, used to be sort of the go-to to form Italy, and I, I still think that they're pretty good. Um, but next to Savoy, they just kind of pale in comparison. And the reason for that um, is both Savoy's strong starting development, which is actually greater than that of Milan if you include their uh, vassal state in Montferrat. Um, but it's the Savoy starting ideas, just plus 25% uh, better relations over time. This means that aggressive expansion will decay 25% faster than it would otherwise. This means that you can expand 25% faster, 
which in a region as uh, densely packed and as well developed and within the Holy Roman Empire as Northern Italy, um, keeping your aggressive expansion in check is of the utmost importance. I think that, more than anything, will be the, the sort of rate limiting factor on my expansion as Tuscany, as Florence, excuse me. Uh, so with all that in mind, let's go ahead and get started. Let's jump into the game. Uh, for those on YouTube, uh, we will be playing Iron Man mode, and no random new world. Uh, uh, I, I don't expect to do the, the colonization game, so it doesn't really matter to me one way or another. But definitely Iron Man. We'll try to get some uh, achievements while we're on this. I'm going to do Florence into Italy. Go ahead and start the Iron Man. So I'm going to go ahead and put a quick break in here for those of you on YouTube, and I will see you back in just a minute. 